to talk cars, have a little fun, serious talk, and a ton of passion with Steve, Felicia, and the rest of the gang here on Drive Friendly. Hey, welcome to another episode of Drive Friendly. I'm your host, Steve Rosansky from Friendly Auto Centers in Mesa, and my beautiful bride to my left, Felicia Rosansky of Platinum Realty. Um, we were supposed to have a guest today, a gentleman who wrote a book all about Coca-Cola, but due to some te technical difficulties, uh, he wasn't able to make it. So um, it's just going to be me and Felicia today. So stick around here. Give us a call at 844-983-0300 if you have any questions, comments, any kind of uh, stuff. What are we going to talk about today? Today, we're going to always, we're going to talk about saving money with your car. But how does your car... Um, how do you deal with your car if you're an Uber driver, Lyft, Instacart, any of those kind of services where you're using your car for service? Does it affect its warranty? Does it affect its extended warranty? So we're going to talk about this. And uh, one of my things that I really want to start the day with is what is going on with New York sports? How about what is wrong? Wrong with, with New, New York, York sports. sports. The Mets... You know, they They're choked. Done. They were the done. Islanders are starting to uh, come around. I really haven't focused on hockey yet because I'm really into football by, right now. But I got to tell you, the New York Jets, we lost what, 54 points we gave up. <laughs> we have given up the most points and scored the least. We, we are, are the, officially the worst team in the We're the opposite the of the Arizona Cardinals. And I I'm cannot say, say enough good Cardinals. things about the Arizona. Who can say enough good things about the Arizona Cardinals? Crazy, They right? are killing it in every place. They are, they are my defense team on my fantasy team. So I'm very happy they're, still... playing, they're playing great and we're super happy with them. But very, very like New York is. I, I think here's what I think. You know, St. Louis is suing the Los Angeles Rams for leaving. Here's how you fix the Jets. Let's have sue to, them for staying. Have, <laughs> sue them. Yes. Let's sue them for staying in New York. They're ruining New York. Uh, do you notice I'm wearing my Baker Mayfield shirt tonight? That's what I'm doing. That's how bad he's hurt. I become a I don't care. I become a Cleveland Browns fan. I like basement teams, and they were looking good this year. How about Joe Burrows and the Cincinnati Bengals? Wow, they turn in. And guess who they play this week? The Jets. Yes. The Jets. So, so Joe Burrows is also one of my fantasy quarterbacks. I'm sorry, but, you know, you got to win. Well, and they're one of my fantasy defense teams. So I may pick them over the Cardinals because the Cardinals are playing Green Bay, and well, that is going to be a tough game. I know. I, oh, I wonder what the line is on that game. All, all I know is this. If you're a betting person, take take – just, just, just take the Bengals. It doesn't matter what the point spread is. The point spread's probably the <laughs> point think, spread's probably like it's twenty. Oh, it's definitely double digits. It's got to be. Take, take that and the over because they'll. It, it's they're not expecting the Jets to score. Cincinnati will do all the scoring. We'll get a field goal maybe in a safety. Here's something interesting about um, some sports coming up. Do you know there's this thing where people keep track of scores that never exist before? So the Cardinals won the other night. 31 to 5. That score has never happened in football. Do you know that? There's this whole website like oddscores.com for the people who are bored and have really nothing else to do. <laughs> this is what they keep track of. And we I only can't. know this because we were sitting in an airport on our way back from New York. We were in New York this week. This oh, past New York. Week. Oh, it was awesome. We Forget about York. it. I had and so rumors of New York being dead are greatly exaggerated. It is up. It is vibrant. There's plenty to do. People are out. Broadway's open. The museums are open. Mm -hmm. The restaurants are open. The stores are open. Macy's on Herald Square was absolutely jam packed. And, that whole, and we don't even have the foreign tourists aren't even allowed in yet. So And that whole thing about Broadway becoming like needle needle park with, with druggies and stuff, you know, because I've been reading it in the local papers. Totally not true. We walked through there. It was it was delightful. We rode really the subways. I mean, you know, you can't be a jerk, but you, you do know, have to show vaccine cards every restaurant. You gotta show a vaccination eat, if you're card eat in a restaurant yeah. even even if you're eating outside you have to show it so they're taking it seriously and 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 it was real all the museums you but have you to show you back stores card. and things with masks no mask nobody's you know and if you go into a local diner or places like that they're not diners. checking i had a cheeseburger deluxe i had I a had, pastrami sandwich my french fries were so good i posted them on instagram you need, they, you, they were just, you, you you need to get out more. I did get out more. I got to New York and it was awesome because I, I ate I my way through the fun. city. Hey, speaking of eating, when is um, By the Bucket going to be opening? Ed White said uh, we're supposed to have a grand opening next Monday, as a matter of fact. And unfortunately, his equipment is sitting offshore of California somewhere. So By the Bucket, which is, what did they say? Cooper and Warner. Big, yes. It's a place that sells meatballs and spaghetti. I can't wait for it to open. Ed White, proprietor, great, great 
uh, person, his wife Connie's going to be involved in there, and uh, we're excited for them opening. As soon as they open, we're going to be there, uh, hopefully for grand opening, and you know maybe we'll bounce a couple of meatballs to some of our listeners. What do you think? Uh, you know what? I also want to talk just another minute before we get into the Go Uber ahead. and the Lyft and cars. Mm-hmm. I just want to talk about traveling right now because we have not really traveled until now. We've mm-hmm. really went out. I mean, we've gone to you know local like we've gone to the West Coast, but like really been in an airport, really gone traveling, been on an airplane. For those of you who have any trepidations or any fears, the airlines are taking the masks still very much in play and Mm -hmm. they are not messing around. We were on JetBlue. I guess something happened on a flight or somebody was doing something on the plane because that pilot was like, I'm going to say for the last time, if you don't have your mask on, you cannot fly with us. That's and it. he was serious. And yeah. he was, and he came out at one point. He was a big guy. Yeah, he, so, he had a duck to go into the bathroom. Yeah, he was, he was a mighty fun, mighty thing. You know, it's, uh, it, and, and, but, and you got to be patient. You got to be patient when it comes to flights being delayed and maintenance. Because we got a flight and it was an hour and a half delayed because it was coming in from, uh, from Cayman Inter- Islands. International. And they said they're basically going to like steam down the plane. Yeah, we, we did. I was on. watching them through the windows. And uh, you know, here's another thing: this whole myth about having recirculated air in an airplane is totally not true. All right, and you go to YouTube and and you can see that. But if if it was a sealed tube and we were breathing it in, it, it would literally collapse. Air has to be drawn in to pressurize the cabin all the time. On the engines, there are these things called air bleeds. Air comes into the plane, and out of the back of the plane is actually a little air bleed that lets the air out. That air, that air in the aircraft is changed many, many, many gazillions of times. And hospital grade filters have always been part of it. Now even more, they change them more frequently. And I, I, you know, I'm a little anal retentive when it comes to flying. I have to know everything about it. But the cleaning procedures that these airlines are doing and the filtration systems. I feel comfortable to fly and, um, you know, we're both immune compromised. So we were really, really careful and we had a, a wonderful trip. So if you want to uh, go on vacation, now's the time. Kristen and Richard aren't on the show with us these times now. Uh, but, you know, call your travel agent and um, uh, it, you there's places to go. There's a world to see. So pretty, pretty exciting out there. And, you speaking, know? and speaking of which, New York, like we said, Anybody ever need any advice about going to New York or what to see, contact us at drivefriendly.com. Call Steve at the shop. We will talk your ear off and tell you all well, the good restaurants, all the places that are still open. Exactly. Don't go by the tribal guides. Don't go to Midtown and all that. That's where all the tourists go. You want the real New York? Just call us. We'll show you where to go. And we, we know all these little out-of-the-way spots that are fantastic way less money than some of those other places charge and the best food, the best drinks and the best time. Because that truly is the city that doesn't sleep. It's 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 awesome. However, that being said, we're very happy to be back in Arizona. Oh, I miss, you because know, it's also the city that you can't ever get around anywhere because there's so much traffic. We we didn't have enough time to visit everybody. I know a couple of my friends uh, are listening in New York and they're watching and I'm sorry I didn't get to see you, but I'll be back <laughs> before you even know it. So um very, very excited. So um, let's get to topic here. Uh, Uber, Lyft, Instacart, all those kind of places. You're using your car for uh, your work. Maybe you're out of work. A lot of people lost their jobs during the pandemic. So they started driving Uber. Um, and now what happens if you go to have your car repaired at any repair shop, such as ours? Uh, we offer lifetime warranties on pretty much every repair. But now it's being used as a commercial vehicle. So let's say I do a set of brakes on your uh, Toyota Corolla and you should get, you know, three, four years of normal driving out of a set of brakes. But if you're driving Uber and Lyft, you're going to be doing tons and tons of stopping. So those brakes for that instance are going to last less. They're not going to last as long. So what we're noticing is automotive dealerships and factories, if they even get a whiff of your using your car for Uber or Lyft, your warranty is null and it's counterpart void. Um, we're seeing a lot of that, especially if you have an extended warranty. So over the last few months, we've seen a lot of people and they ask for years, actually, let me go back. For years, they always ask if a car or a truck is being used for commercial applications, like snow plowing, or let's say you have a pickup truck, you're dragging a trailer. That's, you know, you're not allowed. They don't want to pay if you're using it for 
because beyond it's, it's, its capabilities. Beyond, it's more wear and tear. Right. So now uh, some of these extended warranties, when they send an adjuster down or they ask us, uh, you know, you know, are they using it? Are there any Uber or Lyft stickers? We have to be honest because they send adjusters down. If an adjuster sees an Uber or Lyft or Instacart sticker on your car, they're going to deny your claim. We've had many that have been declined. However, if you're using it, there is an option to buy a, a, an addendum to your policy that you're using it for Uber and Lyft, and you're going to have to pay a little bit more, but they will cover you for those repairs. We recently had, what's that one I hate? CarShield, which is just an awful, awful warranty company. They looked at the person's mileage and realized they did 12,000 miles in four months. Almost impossible. They asked the guy what he does. I'm unemployed. He's out of work. How can he be out of work if you're doing? He's driving around miles? looking for a job. No, he's driving. He's <laughs> driving. You know, he's he's using it for Uber, and they de denied his claim, and he couldn't fight it. He, there was nothing he could do about it. So, if you're using your uh, vehicle for Uber or Lyft, and you purchased an extended warranty, don't be surprised that they don't pay. But call them because almost every single one has an addendum, a rider, an ex an additional policy to cover you for. Um, uh, you know, for repairs. The other thing you're going to want to do is also check with your insurance company, because now if you're using your vehicle for business, A, you have to have that coverage on there, because if you're using it for pleasure, you know, going to work and, you know, traveling, you're insured. But if you're using it to make deliveries, you may not be covered under some inexpensive policies. You call one of these you know, Fufnik kind of insurance companies. And then you find out later, I was on an Uber delivery and somebody ran into me. Guess what? You may not be covered. So you have to be really, really careful. So check with your insurance company on that. Um, we're going to take a break in just a minute. I want to talk about what to do for your car if you're an Uber or Lyft driver to prevent breakdown. Since you're doing a lot of mileage, these cars need different kinds of maintenance um, to do that with. And then we're also going to talk about, we have a couple of winners. We were out last week, so we have a couple of winners. This is the end of our Drive Friendly Arrive Safely campaign. We were ending it this week on Halloween, reminding everybody to drive safely because there are a lot of kids out there mm -hmm. looking for a high fructose corn syrup wherever they can get it. We're doing, so our, <laughs> we're doing our usual thing. We're leaving a bucket of candy in the front yard, Don't turning turning all the Don't lights off that. and hiding in the backyard till everybody leaves. That is not true. That is that is definitely not true. It's totally true. We just, <laughs> we, you know, we don't want to, you know, we want to be the friendly guys. No, we don't have a lot of kids in our neighborhood. And um, last year I watched one kid through the window as he just dumped most of it into his bag. But he that's okay. Like what I'm surprised is if you leave a bowl out and the kid doesn't dump it, I'm like, go for it. You know, that feels well, last, ambitious. The last house we lived, they dumped the candy and took the bowl. <laughs> You got to stop picking those assortments out. Those. So we were talking about Uber and Lyft, and you 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 mentioned Felicia about how hard it is to um, buy a house. I, I want to talk about a customer's car that I have today, who, and 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 this is where you got to be careful. A lot of people are on the fence about doing some repairs. Now we're doing a lot of repairs now on cars because people can't buy a car. But this one lady, she we told her about a month and a half ago she has to fix a radiator fan and she wanted to hold off because i think i'm buying a new car fast forward head gasket blew out today needs a new engine and she has to fix it because she went to go buy another car and there literally are no cars to buy so if you've been putting off repairs waiting for the new cars to come in at a better price don't put it off because it's just <coughs> not happening the, the dealer lots are virtually empty and there is no bargains. I mean, their cars are going above list price. Used cars are, are way, way above what they normally are. So it's a crazy market. It's cheaper to keep her. Um, your car, that is. Um, so getting back to Uber and Lyft and all those. So when you're driving an Uber, Lyft, Instacart, you have to maintain the cars a little bit better because these frequent cycles, that's the time when you start the car, drive it and shut it off. You have more cycles in the amount of miles than you normally would because you have a lot of short trips and instead of, you know, long trips. Some of the things you can do is change your oil more often. Add, use, wow, I can't talk today. Switch to full synthetic oil, maybe with an additive such as Justice Brothers, which is a friction modifier. Change the oil more often than usually and 
you will it, your car like will last longer. Once a month, longer. once every six well, weeks. Well, every three thousand miles would be best because some of these people are doing that much mileage a month. Yeah, because everything's so far away from everything. Yeah, and you're making these frequent trips. Uh, one of our customers, we he just went seven thousand miles in like three months, and his car's turning to sludge because he's not changing it enough. And it took I had to like pull teeth to get him to switch over to synthetic oil. Um, and watch where you're getting your oil change. We talked last week about this, in, or two weeks ago, about how the synthetic blend oil is now changing, uh, where it used to be 80% synthetic and 20% conventional, and now it's almost the other way around. It's like 75% conventional and 25% I want synthetic. Ask you a question about this because I know people are freaking out because of the price of gas, and they always do, and it is what it is, whatever. Right. But there are people. Sometimes there are people like our children who, you know. Money is a little on the tighter side, mm -hmm. and they tend to let it run down to practically nothing. Empty. What does that do to the car if you don't keep it under quarter, if you have less than a quarter of a tank of gas in the car? Well, it, they used to say, you know, if you if you um, run it down to empty, you're sucking all the stuff at the bottom of the tank. And on the old cars, that was true. But, you know, gas floats on top of water. So water is at the bottom of the tank, and water absorbs any of the dirt. But um, a couple of things. Most fuel pumps are located in the fuel tank. The fuel pump is submerged to keep it cool. If you're constantly running low, that pump will tend to overheat and it won't last as long. The other thing is this. Let's say, I don't know, it's one o'clock in the morning and you go into labor. Okay. What are we going to stop? Oh, Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> what are we going to stop on the way to get gas? You have an emergency. The last thing you need to do is to get gas. Remember, E does not mean enough. And you know what? People think they're never going to have an emergency, but I'll give you a perfect example of an emergency. Our daughter had her, has her dog here, and it's this big German Shepherd, Husky, St. Bernard, big dog, was in our backyard this week, and there was a little piece of a cactus that fell off. The dog got the cactus attached to it. The dog Then the dog went to bite the... So it was, it was a disaster. There was cactus everywhere. The dog was crying. I was crying. My daughter was crying. What would happen if I had no gas in the car? Then I'd have to stop for gas with a dog with cactus in his mouth. Make it even worse. You never, ever know when an emergency is going to happen. It just happens. So uh, I want to back up on this. Well, you came and got us. I mean, but that's not yeah. So your gas really had nothing to no, do with No, but any I'm saying if you weren't around, well, I was crying. It was awful. I was crying, so no, I had awful. to drive all the I way back. I had like black and blue, and there was like sticking cactus out of. Oh, it was just terrible. I felt so bad for the dog. Yeah, I spent six hours at the vets waiting for this dog, but that's another story. The point but is, yes, the point is, and what if you didn't have enough gas in your car when you got your friend to call? Please come home and help us because we've got cactus everywhere. I'm never below a quarter of a tank, ever. And that's why I have like 200,000 miles on my original fuel pump, <laughs> because we do stuff like that. Same thing as you. Um, but yeah, um, By the, the other way, thing the dog is, is fine. And thank God. That was very upsetting. Uh, yes. Can we move on? Yes. But so anyway. There's people out there that like dogs that might be worrying. One of the other things, you know, a lot of cars don't have gas filters anymore. The fuel filter is just a little screen inside the tank. One thing, and I've told you a hundred times, if you go to a gas station and the tanker truck is there and the hoses are in the ground, get out of there, drive somewhere else, because there's no filtration between that big tanker truck, the tank, the tanks in the ground, the pump to your car, to your fuel injectors. So, you know, I, I was watching the other day, there was about a hundred cars at Costco for 20 cents a gallon less. 20 cents a gallon. I'm not waiting online for an hour for gas for 20 cents. And the tanker truck was there pumping it in. I can't wait to see what that brings. I have a friend that has a shop by the Costco over here in Gilbert. And there was a couple of people who came in with a lot of crap in their fuel pump. And at 20 cents a gallon cost them like $800. So saving money it. doesn't always, saving pennies cost you dollars. It usually does. So uh, don't be cheap when it comes to gas. But getting back to the Uber and Lyft. Um, and again, if you're driving Uber and Lyft, the last thing you want to do is you may have a call into some weird neighborhood and you don't, you're not familiar with it and you end up in a bad neighborhood getting gas. So try to keep it, uh, you know, full all the time. Every once in a while, put a bottle of injector cleaner in there, something good. Um, there's many, many different brands on there. A lot of them don't do anything, but companies like Justice Brothers and BG, which you'll find at most really reputable repair shops, those are the cream of the crop. They're a little more expensive. They average $20 a bottle, but they work. Um, there are some out there. Remember that Lucas we showed you? Mm -hmm. Lucas, it's called Tune Up in a Bottle. Stuff's not even flammable. You can pour it into a dish and take a blowtorch to it. It'll sit there and smoke. 
I'm not saying it's a bad product. It's just not what you think it is. Um, frequent alignments, frequent tire rotations, keeping an eye on the air in the tires, very, very important. Uh, alignment and uh, air in the tires, I always talk about great ways to save money on gas. When you're low on air in your tires, you're just burning up gas. Everybody's Imagine, going to be low now, right? Yeah. There's a the temperature drop. Temperature in the last six weeks has dropped about 40 degrees. So imagine you're riding a bicycle and it's filled up with air. It's nice and easy. You stick it in the garage for a few months. The temperature drops. You get out there and you go to ride the bicycle and it's hard to pedal because the tires are low. Can Same thing with the car. I go back in the house and I'm done for the day. Okay, but some people <laughs> like to ride the bike. But it, imagine your car's engine trying to do that same work. The strain it puts on your engine, the strain it puts on your transmission. Speaking of transmission, transmission fluid in an Uber and Lyft. Change it often. A lot of people use cars like Nissan Sentras or a lot of the Hyundais. They have those CVT transmissions. The owner's manual says, don't change the uh, tra fluid till 100,000. Look to the next page and your transmission's only warranty to 100,000. You know, uh, what do you think there? You know, coincidence? Built-in obsolescence. Change your, change your transmission oil when it looks before it gets dirty. If you keep the transmission fluid clean all the time, it'll last basically well, forever. Well, let me ask you something. You know, you say when it look, if it looks dirty, but I can tell you that I don't think I've ever seen what my transmission fluid looks like. So is there like is there like a, a certain every so often or when you get your oil changed? 30,000 miles. time you get your oil changed? Change the transmission fluid every 30,000, no matter what it looks like. And it will basically last the life of the car. Your transmission has what? 250,000 miles on it. Original one, original engine. Why? Because we've changed the oil on it a gazillion times, changed the transmission fluid a gazillion times. That's why it lasts so long. Uh, any transmission shop. Which is like the cheapest thing in the world to do is oil and transmission fluid. Well, we like had one. The cheapest thing to do. We had one customer. He changed his oil once a year because he wanted to save money. And then last year we had to put a $9,000 engine in his car. And he's like, well, you know, I did save money on the oil changes. So yeah, he saved over over the 10 years that he had the car, he saved $600, but he spent 9,000 to fix it. Makes perfect sense, right? I get that. I don't know. When you go to your repair shops, ask them what your warranty is. Ask them if it's different for an Uber. 99% of the shops are going to give you a different warranty. Some shops that automatically do a three year 36,000 mile may only give you a 1212 warranty. So ask beforehand. We give a three year 36,000 mile, even if you use it in Uber, as long as you're maintaining it with us properly and changing the oil and, and maintaining it. But if you abuse it, you, well, nobody's going to Well, on the positive warranty. side, don't you think that there are some businesses that might give a discount because it is a business car? Yeah. And uh, give people oh. a break. I mean, obviously, if you're driving an Uber and a Lyft, you're hustling, you're trying to make a dollar. I mean, are there shops out there that will like work with you instead of working against you? Yeah, most shops will give Lyft uh, discounts. We off, we do the Lyft inspections. Uh, do really, people really ask? Cheap. Do you think the drivers ask? Uh, sometimes, but Uber and Lyft actually have uh, a network of their own auto repair shops now that um, I, I don't believe in it, but they're doing work really, really cheap exclusively for Lyft drivers. And, but they using the least expensive parts with the least expensive labor. So who's really working on your car and what are you actually getting? Is it a deal or is it more of, you know, yeah, you're saving money, but what happens on the other end? You know what I mean? Like the lady who didn't fix her radiator fan. But what if somebody comes to you? Would you give them a deal? Absolutely. We always give Lyft drivers a discount because they're working people. I mean, we understand what it's like to, uh, to be out of work. And a lot of people due to this pandemic, man, I've never seen anything like it. They did with the, I, I saw guys who worked for big companies, you know, I'm not saying Boeing, but I'm just using it as an example. These guys who had great jobs and the offices got closed and, you know, guys who, who are in like IT, who they, they call expendable or were working from home and they had to put food on the table. So they were out there busting their chops you know, driving for Uber, uh, Instacart. We, I've had meals delivered by customers here. Uh, Instacart shopping. They have to do what they have to do. Actually, Uber does more than just drive you. It'll drive your stuff. It'll pick up like, it'll pick up. I think there's some Ubers that'll pick up um, for, from the pharmacy for you. Uber, well, Uber now does pharmacies. Mm -hmm. um, Instacart uh, is one for like groceries, things like that. But I've used Uber to like, hey, that guy who does our t-shirts for the guys in in uh, Scottsdale, um, we will get them to pick up packages for us. It's wonderful. We use Uber for a lot of different things. So let's say there's a part waiting somewhere in Phoenix 
and we can't pick it up. We'll just Uber the the package. And the guys, the drivers don't seem to mind. They don't care. They don't have to chit chat with anybody. <laughs> so that's that, that's. I'll a wear good a thing. mask for five minutes. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I think it's a wonderful thing. It's really a great program. It, it, it is convenient, but you just have to maintain your car a little bit better, and you have to be aware again with your your insurance, your your your, your basic liability insurance, your umbrella policy. You know, if you're driving your wife to the movies and God forbid you get into an accident, you're covered. But if you're delivering a part for to somebody's house, it's considered commercial, you may not be covered. And your umbrella policy may not be covered. Most people don't even have an umbrella policy. So, um, you know, be careful of that. And again, if you bought an extended warranty and you're using it for Uber, you're not, you could tell them that you're not doing Uber, but they will look at mileage calculations and you're gonna have to justify how you did 12,000 miles in three months. And you can't just say, I'm going to visit my mom in surprise. How about I'm wherever. going to find myself? <laughs> yeah, it's, they're going to figure it out and they're going to, they're going to just say, even if they have no proof, they will deny it. They don't care. And we, and, and some of these budget warranty companies are just awful when it comes to that. And, uh, when you purchase a car, you know, brand new, you know, tell the dealer, Hey, I'm going to be using this for Uber. Is this a good car for that kind of frequent, uh, mileage? Well, what is a good car for an Uber or a Lyft driver? I don't know. I like Hyundai's and, and Kia's. I think they're wonderful cars. Um, Nissan, Toyota, and Toyota, Honda. These are great, great cars. But I wouldn't buy one of our customers, uh, bought a brand new car this year. And, uh, it was his first new car in years. And he kind of retired and he's been doing Uber. He has a car a year. He's got 24,000 miles on it. The car only comes with a, a, uh, five year, 50,000 mile. He's a year in and he's halfway through his warranty already. And so if he goes to buy an extended warranty, they're going to go, how did you do so many miles? And he's going to say, hey, man, I drive Uber every day. And you're not going to get it. So my suggestion, if you're going to buy something, buy something used. Um, not too high miles because Uber does have standards. You have to have the car inspected. It has to be within, I think, six years old and under uh, a certain mileage. And uh, you have to get the car inspected, make sure the seat belts, the tires, the glass, everything works, air conditioning, heat, all that kinds of stuff. And, um, but you know, I would buy something secondhand, you know, like a Nissan Rogue is a. I have to say, I think they've upped their game because I remember at the beginning, the cars you got into were like, eh, you're kind of taking your chances sometimes. Remember yeah. now you get into one of those cars. They're always in good condition. Yeah. They're always, they were comfortable, well, well ventilated. And there's not a lot well, of. Well, there are some drivers that take pride. I mean, you get in the car and, and they have like disco lights and <laughs> mints and bottles of water. And not as much as we used to see it, but no, they're like think... really proud of their rides. I mean, they come in, hey, you have a phone charger? I have every phone charger in the world. Would you like a mint, a candy, Jolly Ranchers, like all over the place? It's like, it's like a feast back there, <laughs> you know? Remember the last time we went to the rhythm room and we got this guy? We had flashing lights inside. Remember all those purple lights? And there was literally like, like munchy food. It was, yeah, it was crackers fun. and Ritz things and Hopefully stuff. Hopefully we'll get back to that sooner rather than later. Well, it is open and we should start heading out there and, and, and we will. I mean, it's going to be um, very exciting. So um, what's going on, Felicia? Well, what do we got we going wanna, on? Before we get on to the ways to save things about your house, ways to save money and ways to make your house a little nicer and what's really going on in the housing mm -hmm. market, I just want to recap. This is the end of our 13-week special where we did drive friendly, arrive safely. We worked, talked every week about things that people really need to know to drive safely. That's right. Because you cannot get around in Arizona without a car. You can try, and there is some limited public transportation, but I'm venturing to guess that 95 to 99% of the people around here are driving. And there's a lot of things, and I just want to, I want to just quickly go over what we talked about in case anybody forgot, and then talk about people who took our pledge, and we have our last pledge winner. If hundreds of people have taken out. Hundreds. It's really been it's really exciting. Cool. Yeah. So, you know, we talked about, we start out by saying, here's just the highlights to remind people, and in case you weren't listening, the things we really, really want you to know, because we're on the road too, and I want to be safe, and I want Steve to be safe, and I want my friends to be safe, and I want you guys to be safe so you can listen to us every week. So the number one thing that people don't realize is slow kills. When you drive slowly, it is more dangerous than driving fast, especially on a highway, because everybody's trying to go around you, and they do crazy things because people are crazy. Everyone has to be there five minutes ago. Half the people are texting while they're driving, and slow kills. And if you're going to drive slow, 
please just drive in the right lane where people are expecting you to drive slow. Left lane is not where you drive slow because you just feel comfortable. <laughs> They're always from Minnesota. I love people from Minnesota. Don't so do I. Minnesota I'm people. just saying, you know. Okay. The next one is wear your seatbelt. This comes up all the time. As a matter of fact, a few weeks ago, I was driving, literally, it was driving from my house to my mailbox. Yes, I was lazy. Don't don't even pretend you haven't all done it because you've all done it driving to your cluster box. And I didn't put my seatbelt on initially. And I'm like, oh my God, how embarrassing would it be if something happened to me when I talked to everybody about wearing their seatbelt? Most... So many accidents happen within a mile of your own home because you're relaxed. You're not really focusing. You're like, what could happen here? Mm -hmm. You know what? Anything could happen to anybody in a car at any time. You're in your car. Before you turn the engine on, put your seatbelt on. And here's something for you. If a passenger in your car is not wearing a seatbelt and you get stopped by the police, you're getting a ticket. That's right. And it doesn't matter if they're sitting in the front or the back or on the roof or <laughs> in the trunk. You're getting a ticket. Yeah. So you're, you are responsible for your passengers. Avoid the no zone. The no, if, no zone? The no, no zone. If you cannot see the face of the truck driver next to the truck you were driving, he can't see you. That's right. That's and you right. really need to know this. And here's something that people don't talk about, which is a little scary. We have a truck driver shortage in this country. Okay. So the truckers that are driving are driving longer more hours, more shifts, and they're more tired. So give the guys and the girls who are driving the trucks, give them a break. Stop trying to cut them off. Stop trying to be funny around them. These guys, I mean, they're literally keeping this country moving. So when you see them, how about a friendly wave and don't try to pass them and be a jerk about it. And realize that they can't see you if you can't see them. You want to take on uh, taking breaks? Yep. When you're making a long drive, Make sure you, you map out a place for taking breaks. Maybe pull over, you know, take a break, walk around, make your phone calls you got to do. Get some food when you get some gas. You know, try to chart this out beforehand so, A, you don't run out of gas because anybody who's ever driven the 10 going back east, if you see gas, you stop for it. Don't be a hero because the next stop may be closed. But give yourself time for breaks. A lot of the new cars, after you're driving for about two hours, a thing will come up on your dashboard. Remember yeah. a few cars we rented? Hey, it's, it's time, time for a stop. break. Very important. And you know what? It's a great idea to map out. Go on to MapQuest, Google Maps, MapQuest, Google Maps or Waze. Waze. Or, and, they, and even if you know where you're going and you've been there a hundred times, they'll tell you where the construction is. And guess what? There's construction everywhere. Mm -hmm. They'll also tell you where an accident is, something they can't predict. Yep. So they might, you think you're taking the shortcut, might add two hours to your day if you're on the wrong road at the wrong time. Here's one of my favorites right here. Uh, rules of the road. We saw this in New York. We were driving to the airport. Um, actually, you weren't with me. We were driving somewhere uh, in the city. I'm driving on the right lane of the LIE, and a guy cuts over from the left lane. We're past the exit. He pulls over to get onto the shoulder in front of two lanes to back up. Now, if anybody ever driven the LIE in New York, you that's just insane. Meanwhile, there's an exit every five minutes and all he had to do is go to the next exit. If you miss your exit, you know, don't be stupid and cut people off and back up. Just go to the next exit, turn around. So you'll be five minutes late. It's, you know, take you're taking your life. Five in your minutes hands late is better people. than five weeks in the hospital with it, a broken back. Exactly. And try to know your basic driving rules, know what your school zones are. Turn signal. That's that stick on the side of your steering wheel on the left side. It goes up and down. Use it. A people, lot of people really don't. don't know what you're thinking of. You might know yeah. that I'm all five minutes from home and my home is on the right, the next corner to the right. I guarantee you the guy in the car behind you doesn't know where you live. Right. And also, if he does, that's an issue. And also don't pass people on the right, pass people on the left because the right side has a terrible blind spot. And it's, I think it's illegal too, if I remember right. Um, drive defensively. Keep your eyes on the road. Be aware of all road signs and the other drivers. Keep a safe distance. Don't tailgate. Jeez, I see people. I can. It, it, it's ridiculous how close they are. And when somebody tailgates me, I'm the worst guy to tailgate because my foot comes off the gas and I'll. You, make you gave sweat. our kids a great piece of advice when they started driving. That's Don't right. look at the guy ahead in front of you. Look at the guy in front of the guy in front of you. Exactly. Because what he does is what the guy in front of you is going to do. And people break for all kinds of crazy reasons. Yep. Uh, every once in a while, get out, check all your lights. There's no state inspection here like there is in other states. So unless you get a ticket, you're not going to know whether a brake light or a headlight is out. So every once in a while, get somebody in the car, have them work all the lights, headlights, turn signals, make sure all of that is working. 
Um, don't text. I mean, come on. Do we have to say I, this? I mean, do we really have to say this? Who we, hasn't passed somebody who's wobbly on the road and they're out there giving their life story on their text? Really? Come on. It's just stupid. It's just stupid. It just give it's it just a, stupid. It's just uh, stupid. You don't need a Facebook post while you're driving. And definitely don't drive under the influence of anything. It's, okay? Especially here. It's so expensive. Besides being incredibly stupid, it's so expensive. And 20, you'll get caught. It's $20,000. You will get caught. These police are out. They know what to look for. You think you're being clever because you're driving slow. You don't have, you just don't know. You just don't. Yeah. There's so many Ubers and Lyfts. Just use them. I like the people who they drink and drive and then they drive exactly 65 miles an hour. But they may get away with it, but they may not have followed two things I said before, like check your brake lights. All they need is a reason to pull you over. Hey, you got a brake light out and you open up the window and you smell like uh, a bar. So. Okay, Phil, let's do that wheel. You ready to do the wheel? Okay. All right, so this is so it. This now, is the, last the last winner. Person who took the pledge. Brianna Cruz. Brianna Cruz. Brianna Cruz. What does she win? She wins $25 gift certificate to Starbucks. Nice. And we're going to donate $25 to Mothers Against Drunk Driving for in her name because we believe in taking and not having people drive and drink and doing everything. And next week we will have, from all our winners, we are going to have the big thousand dollar winner yes I'm excited somebody about that. who took it is going to win a thousand dollars just for being a good citizen one and of, taking the pledge one of our winners steven feigenbaum from oceanside uh donated his card and the 25 dollars back to the uh um mothers against drunk driving so we donated uh wrote a check for that I want to thank him for that and um we're going to do something else with Drive Friendly coming up. We're not telling you what it is yet, probably because we don't know what it is yet. <laughs> I've but got some ideas. We're all going to, we, you know, the whole thing of the show is, you know, to make you a better consumer, to make you a better driver, and to learn a little stuff uh, each week about how to, you know. Just what we know we smarter. like to share. You're and what we hear we like to, to share. And when we find interesting guests, we love to share them. Um, but we only have a few more minutes. And I do want to talk because I am in real estate, as 98,000 other agents are. But there are not 98,000 listings. There's only about 10,000 listings right now. And I just want to touch on the market, what's going on. Interest rates, they believe, is going to start climbing up a little bit. Um, houses are still climbing. The prices are not going down. And we really don't think they're going to go down at least for another year. They will go. They will rise more slowly. This is what smart money is saying. People are way smarter than me. I listen to conference calls. I'm in webinars. I go talk to my colleagues. And from everything we're hearing, the prices are still going up, but not astro not at a 10% or 15% rate. They're going up more at like a 5 to 7% rate right now. But they are still going up. So with that being said, I mean, we recently, my partner and I recently had a house in Tempe. It was really not, it was, you know, four bedrooms, two baths. It was, you know... 42 years old, I think. And we put in a bid above asking and they came back and they said they want $60,000 more. And that's a bargain. And a three day inspection period. And at that point, my client was like, mm, I'm out. So, but somebody will buy it. Somebody will buy it. You know, you know what I've noticed and, and not to cut in while well, I'm doing it anyway, that, you know, I've been a U-Haul dealer for over 35 years. And the last few years, this time of year, I usually have a ton of trucks and trailers. And we have virtually nothing. Forget about the snowbirds and the Canadians. The people that are moving in and buying these houses are more affluent. And there's a lot of moving trucks. They, they're not using U-Hauls and Penske's and stuff to move their stuff here. They're using moving services. And there's a lot of empty moving trucks parked here waiting for people to move out. But um, we rented a few this week, one way going to places like Texas, which is really, really hot, and Florida, which is, I don't understand why so many people are moving. People are cashing out of their houses. They're saying, I'm taking my money and we're going to go to Florida and live amongst the giant insects, <laughs> or they're moving to Texas and they're cashing out of the home and the people that are buying them have a lot more money, so they're paying top dollar for them. And they're not using U-Hauls and rental trucks. They have moving services and they're coming in and using a lot of local labor, you know, painters and carpenters. So it's a different feel that I see is coming here. We are no know? longer, we are no longer the place to go when you want to go someplace. There's to no bargains. There's no, there, no, there's no bargains. Um, but 
That being said, in a lot of ways, that's great because we're growing up as a city. We're becoming more mature. We're mm -hmm. getting a lot more. Um, we're, we're building better. You know, back in when, with the housing crash, we were a land where all we had was, you know, land speculation and tourism. Mm -hmm. And there really wasn't much else. Now we have so many high tech companies here and so many service industries here and so many insurance companies that are coming in. And so, uh, you know, tech, not, tech and so centers. many tech, we're really becoming a tech center between Intel and, Tem and uh, Taiwan semiconductor uh, manufacturers. We are becoming a huge, huge tech center. So it's, it's a great place to live. That means we're just going to have more. We're going to have, you know, better. And I know we're working on better infrastructure. I know in Mesa. Mm -hmm. They're working a lot on better infrastructure. We're working on better quality of life, better, more services for our people. Mm -hmm. They're working on more, um, uh, you know, the light rail is becoming more popular. Oh, yeah, roads they're expanding are being, out west Roads again. are being expanded. So things are, th things are good, but mm -hmm. you have to understand where you're living and, and Mesa, what it's like now. Yeah, Mesa's hot. Mesa's just, Mesa's just crazy. They're building another 200,000 square foot warehouse uh, industrial uh, up in Longbow, which is like 202 in Wrecker over there. And I also see a more diverse population moving in here. We have people from all over the world that are coming here to work at these. And tech you know what centers. that means? Better yeah. food. Better restaurants. More interesting kinds of food. So actually, it was really funny. I met the owner of Uncle Giuseppe's, which is a big Italian supermarket chain in New York. I mean, everything mm -hmm. Italian. I actually met him at the bakery, and I said, "When are you coming out to uh, Arizona?" He goes. I get letters all the time from you people out there. He's like, so let's keep I writing. just We got to start a writing campaign. His issue is he can't find a team of workers to run it because he would need so many people. Like you need like 60 employees in a store to work it, make all these Italian specialties. And a lot of people from New York aren't willing to move out here yet, but they're monitoring it because a place I like that would do I think we should start a writing campaign. I think it would do fantastic. We should get out to New Yorkers in the desert and start a writing campaign. Well, I think the people from that Facebook group are the ones that are writing them because he did mention uh, the, the website. So, um, But it, it's exciting. And being from New York and California, you have a more diverse population. So um, you're getting all kinds of restaurants are going to be opening. And I think Mesa is like kind of the queens of of the Phoenix area, we get a mix of everybody from everywhere. And it's exciting. It is exciting. You know, so. I just have a couple of minutes and I just want to go, talk go, a little go. bit about housing. Yep. That's fine. And I, I have a lot, obviously I always have a lot to say, so I can only give a hint or two, you should know. but I, but I will say this. It's so important for those of you, it gets very depressing when you want to sell your house or you want to move actually. And you think about selling your house and then you realize wherever I sell, I'm going to have to buy something more expensive. Am I really going to come out ahead or behind? And it's really hard to figure out. And one of the reasons people want to leave is because they're just tired of the four walls. So all I'm going to say out to you guys who are thinking about that way, there are still so many ways you can improve your home and make your home fun to live in and keep it current and up to date. Because you know what? Three to five years, you're probably going to sell your house. So here, I just want to say... It is a great idea. I know everything is expensive, but guess what? I think things are only going to get more expensive. So as we're coming to the nicer weather where people can go out and do things, this is a great time to do landscaping. It is a Ooh, yeah. great time to do landscaping on your house because first impressions always count. So if you're even thinking about selling your house in two to three years, start landscaping now. So the bushes and the flowers and whatever you plant can become mature. You can see what will live and what won't. And then you can get a real feel for it, whether you want to plant some trees. And we're coming on planting season now. Mm -hmm. So this would be a wonderful time. You know, it always looks nice. Rose bushes look lovely. Oh, yeah. Lantanas are super popular. What is a flower that we have? Buya Via grow. You yeah. can't kill them. Yeah, they grow. grow everywhere. In a week, so, we were gone. I mean, the whole outside is just like... So I'm just... The first thing I would say is start with the outside to make it look fresh and also see what's going to live because when you do want to sell your house, the pictures on the outside, that's what's going to draw people to your house in the first place. They want to know that you care and the outside looks good. They're going to assume the inside is even more beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's my first piece of advice. And I will be giving more tips next week when we have more time. I think I want to start talk, getting some, some local people in and talking about like one thing is about house painting and, um, yeah, you know, I'd like to I'd like to get information out to our listeners about that because there seems to be a lot of confusion. There's places people that just throwing a coat of paint on, and the types of paint. I'd like to okay. Have well, some well, we'll look into it. Maybe that we'll talk that. about that next week. House painting, the better paints. What's a good paint? What's a good house painter? Yeah, and, okay. and what? Yeah, what makes a good house painter? Because there are some really crappy ones out there, but there are a lot of really good ones out there. 
So uh, with that, we want to thank everybody for listening, and we want to thank our new audience over at Money Radio. I'm sorry our Coca-Cola guy didn't come on today. That would have been really cool. He'll be back. The guy wrote a whole book I know. on Coca-Cola. And I read it, and it's really interesting. It's you would really, have no really idea the history be- behind Coca-Cola. Um, We're going to get him back. We have to fix his Zoom. I mean, he's he's an older gentleman, and he has a little Zoom challenge, but we'll get him back because he's an excellent guy. Zoom Such a great guy. challenge? Is that like a thing now? It is now. I have Zoom syndrome. You can quote me on it. All right. All right. We'll catch you guys all next week. And always remember, drive friendly and arrive safely. Have a good night. Thank you for listening to Drive Friendly with Steve and Felicia. Visit drivefriendlyaz.com for live shows, past shows, and more about our host and guests.